Good morning, y'all. This is Todd. Steven back there on the sawmill. We're running the LC15 this morning. We're cutting some 1x4s and 1x4s. I'm going to show you the process. And we're going to put Steven's uh, phone on time lapse, so I'll try to get a time lapse of this vlog if I can. Hope you enjoy, guys. If you got any questions, leave it in the comments. It's hot. Got the old straw hat on tonight. Louisiana temperature is just unreal right now. Humidity's bad. It's been running about 90 degrees. It's a lot better than over 100. Triple digits are tough. So guys, we got the fans going. Trying to stay cool. Staying hydrated. God bless. I hope you enjoy. Guys, okay, this is a 16 foot log. It's running about what? 20 something inches? The high? The tape right there? We got the small end on this end here. What is it? About 20 inches. I guess that one, right? Get lucky every once in a while. But we're gonna start slabbing it off. Rolling it around and see what we can get out of it. It's got that first slab cut already. guys we got a starting to get a few little waves on that uh, log there so we're gonna go ahead and shut down put another blade on there it's a lot easier to change that blade instead of making bad wood I can put it on that sharpener in there and hit it real quick it'll be ready to go but we got plenty of blades we're gonna set it to the side fire it back up right in here we've been getting a vibration well not really a vibration but a humming sound and I noticed this bolt right here the paint's coming off of it. I don't know if it, something's getting a little bit out of line or there's a little bit of trash under it. It's got just a little small hum to it and I can't find what's going on. It's one of them things that'll show its face later on, I guess. We've been taking these off and cleaning them because sometimes that pitch will get built up underneath there. I seen on Facebook the other day, somebody was wondering why that was building up in there. A lot of your problems when you're cutting pine, it's got a lot of pine resin. And when you run water and soap, what it does is it gets, it puts, once you get that sawdust wet, even with that soap on there, it builds up underneath that, this belt, which it ain't supposed to. It's supposed to sling it out, but it does. That's one of the reasons why I run straight diesel. Diesel takes care of that. If you notice under these belts, how clean they are. See up underneath there? There's nothing in there. Little bitty minor stuff. There's no buildup. That uh, diesel seems to keep everything clean, especially with that pine rosin. That pine rosin is bad about building up on these. On the rollers the other day, which right here on this roller, we had a blade. I don't know if I showed you that. Right here on this roller, we had a little buildup on that roller. What happened is you wasn't putting enough diesel on there. He had, tur he had turned the diesel down for for too long and it built up on there what that made that do 
when you got that build up on there, that blade dove. As soon as it dove, you know, we had to see what's what's wrong. Either the blade is dull, out of set. I mean, there's several things that cause that, but as soon as I seen that on that blade, I knew what it was. It's a little bit of a little bit of diesel, clean that right back off. Guys, if you don't want to run straight diesel in your container, put you some diesel. And I like to put a little bit of transmission fluid in it too. In a spray bottle, which I use just a lighter fluid bottle, and spray that, them rollers every once in a while, spray that uh, blade every, every once in a while, it cleans it up and makes a world of difference. The, the water on there is not to keep that blade cool. That water on there is to keep it clean. And if you ever work in a shop and get all oil and dirt and pine resin on your hand, soap will work. It gets it off, but not like diesel does. Diesel takes it right off. It's a, it's a very good cleaner, especially with that transmission fluid. That transmission fluid is a very, very good cleaner. I know a lot of times in our diesel trucks, when we change the fuel filter, we'll take transmission fluid and fill up the filter housing so it'll run straight transmission fluid through your injectors and stuff. It doesn't hurt that motor, that diesel motor, but it cleans them injectors out. Now, don't do that because I said to do it. That's the way I do it. And it will clean your injectors back out. Works fine. Now, the problem is when they check your tank, sometimes they think you're running red fuel in there instead of the regular on-road fuel because it does put a red tint in your fuel for a little while. Guys, just a little tip to kind of help you out with some stuff that I do. But he's over here changing the blade right now. We're getting ready to fire off again. Yeah, anytime you take all this off, you just we clean it out, make sure it's clean, everything's ready to go. You gotta check down here in your see this part right here. It'll build up in there. A lot of people will take and cut these teeth out down here in the bottom. And it will keep it from plugging up right there. The bad problem about that is when that blade breaks, that's what keeps it from swinging out. That blade will swing right out to the side right here. And it's a safety thing. If you got a kid or somebody walking by, that blade will hurt them bad. That's why we try not to cut them out. I always keep the kids away from that inside anyway. What do you think about it, Mr. Steven? Uh, I think we're ready. Think you're ready? Steven been doing a good job. He's been running sawmill quite a while now. He's catching on to all these cuts. We just changed the blade. It's got a little bit of a dip in that top. It's not real smooth, so we're gonna just take a half inch off, straighten it back up before we roll it. He's gonna roll it to the side and we can start cutting it down. That way you got good wood.
we got a good flat side on the bottom and the left side. Now we're going to come down with three and a half inches after I get the slab off the top. One by fours and four by fours is the same width. So we get them all out of the same low. Make it very easy. Got five four by fours, 16, and a whole bunch of one by fours right here. This is the other part of that log. So we got several boards out of that one one log. There's five four by fours and 25 one by fours right here, plus what he's cutting right now. So that log yields quite a few one by fours and four by fours out of it. Good looking lumber though. 